Hello, brothers, sisters, Church of the Living God. Hello and good morning. It's 8.51 a.m. my time. Oh. Bow your heads with me, please. Brothers, sisters, Church of the Living God, let's pray together, shall we? <clears throat> Father, Lord Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. My Lord, my God, my Father, my Savior, Jesus Christ. Please forgive me of my sins. Wash me out of my wickedness, my unrighteousness. Please protect me from the attacks that have come upon me yesterday. Lord, the seriousness of this, it is so serious, Lord. I truly shudder at the fact that Thou, Lord, would have me, a sinner who is chief, the least of all saints to speak such things about who you are. I am really... Lord, Brother Aaron, this is... You should have... This, he should be doing this. You should have given this unto him, Lord. For he is far more worthy, far more deserving than I. But thou, O Lord, you would have me to speak on this today. And you and I, Lord, have spent a couple of days you showing me truth through your word. And Lord, I just get me out that thou, O Lord, may speak to your body, to your congregation, to your people, Lord, to the Jew first and also unto the Gentiles. Please, Lord, give me the wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, the prudence, the patience, the countenance, that you may be glorified, Lord. That you may be glorified, Lord. And Lord, Jesus, my God and Father, this is going to offend people. But the Church of the Living God, those who know not just here, but here, Lord. They know who Thou art, Father, Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, those who are prideful and clinging to the heretical, satanic belief of the Trinity, may this be a proverbial And Lord, may their hearts be pricked. And may you alone, Jesus, my God, my Father, be glorified. And Lord, for the brethren, may your sweet provision, mercy, grace, correction, be upon the brethren, the beloved Alexander Hartley, the beloved Justin Laird, the beloved Jeffrey Jones, the beloved Frederick Noon, the beloved Alan Allen, the beloved Jeff Allen, the sweet, beloved Matthew Mellinson. Sweet, beloved Aaron Judge, the beloved Christopher Lappin, the beloved Matthew Kroon, the beloved Matthew Landau, the beloved Philip Newton. We thank you, Lord, for giving me the privilege 
to finally meet such a beloved brother. <coughs> the beloved Sasha. The beloved Victor Menjivar. The beloved Jeff Allen. I think I already said uh, the beloved Jeffrey Jones, the beloved Jacob Thompson, the beloved Matthew Landau, and all the brethren, Lord, and our sisters, Emma, Jen, Sister Catherine, women after your own heart, Lord. My God, my Savior. Jesus Christ, my Lord, please be with this mouth. Get me out, that thou, O Lord, may be glorified. And Lord, the enemies of you, you know who they are, and you <laughs> let us know who they are. Silence their tongues. And may their shame be recompensed upon them, that they may come to true repentance. And get saved. Here we go. We ask this in the name of our Lord, our God, our Savior, our Father, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, God's people said, Amen. What? Got a problem with prayer, huh? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you you sure do, don't you? You probably you probably don't even pray yourself, do you? <laughs> I'm not talking to you, my brothers and sisters, of course. <coughs> ah. All right. If I forgot any of you, please forgive me. Um, for the individual who um, texted me yesterday, I'm sorry, um, I did not intentionally or purposely ignore you. I will try to get a hold of you today, okay? But um, this video, we are going to be going through lots of scriptures. And uh, we are going to be looking into who God is. Our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. The Godhead, spirit, soul, and body. So, get your authorized version of the scriptures. The King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. Okay? Uh, we're going to begin... In Psalm 12, this was part of my morning devotional reading with the Lord and study. Reading and studying are two different things. You have to read to study, but you don't sometimes. You just read it, but don't study it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, turn in your authorized version of the scriptures, the true and real scriptures, the King James scriptures, onto Psalm 12. Okay? Okay. And also, too, some of the resources that uh, I'm going to be using in this video is the Catholic Bible, a smaller version of the Catholic Bible, and of course, an, uh, another version of the Catholic Bible. Okay? But let us start in Psalm number 12. We're going to read this whole psalm. Can you handle that? I know you can. But. So, get your scriptures and follow me along. Don't just sit there. Come on. Psalm number 12 in its entirety. Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth. 
for the faithful fail from among the children of men. They speak vanity, every one with his neighbor. With flattering lips and with a double heart do they speak. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaketh proud things. Who have said, with our tongue we will prevail. Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? For the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy, now will I arise, saith the Lord. I will set him in safety that I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. The authorized version of the scriptures to arrive at what we have today went through a seven purification process. Okay? Uh, not going to get into that, but you research that on your own and be amazed. <laughs> it's true. Thou shalt keep them. What is the them? The words. O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. Jesuits, Catholics, scholars. Psalm 138. Verses 1 and 2. I will praise thee with my whole heart before the little g gods will I sing praise unto thee. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Do we need to go to John 17, verse 17? Do we? No, no. We get this. Well, Fred, why would you start out with that? You, um... You claim to be a King James Scripture believer. You claim to believe that the King James Scriptures is perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration, word of God, that this, the authorized version of the scriptures, is flawless, doesn't need to be corrected. It changes us, we don't change it. You say you believe that. And yet, you're a Trinitarian? This book does not teach one God consisting of three divine persons. It does not teach that. And let's let's get something straight right here, right now. Look at me. Look at me. Okay? I am not a Trinitarian. You know why? Because I know here and know here and believe here that Jesus Christ is the Father. Jesus Christ is is the Father. Do you get that? That alone should prove to you that I am not a Trinitarian. That alone. Why do you say that?
What is the most important doctrine unto the Catholic? Hmm? Mary worship. No. That's important. Yes. But no, it's not. Transubstantiation, making the bale cookie into flesh and the wine into blood. No. Purgatory. No. The infallibility of the Pope. No. No. What is the most important doctrine unto the Catholic? I'm going to be reading something out of the Roman Catholic Bible. This is the Bible to the Catholic. The Catechism. Can't tell you how many times with the Catholics that I've witnessed to. Number one, they're may, uh, not amazed, but they're taken aback. It's like, how come you know so much about the Catechism and our faith and you're not a Catholic? Know thy, know thy, uh, know thy enemy. What is the most important doctrine to the Catholic? I am going to be reading to you from the Roman Catholic Catechism, the Bible unto the Catholic, uh, on the page here, 69, their verse numbers, 232 on 2, 235. Okay? I'm going to read some other things in here as well before we get into the study of the scriptures. Okay? And, oh, here, like I like to do. See that? Pause it. Take a, snap, a screenshot of it and zoom in if you are so inclined. Okay? And also, to right there, the colored highlighted stuff. Pause it, take a screenshot, and zoom in and read it if you are so inclined. Okay? <laughs> I might get a little con... No, I will get a little congested in this video, just so you know. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Christians are baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And I've addressed that before, so I'm not going to get off on that. Before receiving the sacrament, they respond to a three-part question when asked to confess the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. I do, quote, The faith of all Christians rests on the Trinity. The faith of all Christians, Christians, rests on the Trinity. Christians are baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. For there is one name given among men under heaven by, way, by which we must be saved. Christians are baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Not in their names, for there is only one God, the Almighty Father, His Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Most Holy Trinity. The mystery of the, Holy, of the Most Holy Trinity is the central mystery of Christian faith and life. It is the mystery of God himself. It is therefore the source of all the other mysteries of faith, the light that enlightens them. It is 
the most fundamental and essential teaching in the hierarchy of the truths of faith. The whole history of salvation is identical with the history of the way and the means by which the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit reveals himself to men and reconciles and unites with himself those who turn away from sin. And when you look into history, you know, the church history, Catholic history, the first thing that they started to teach, the very first thing, and you can look this up on your own, it is historically accurate, okay? The first thing they started to teach was the pagan Satanic, Babylonian, Egyptian, Catholic, Trinity. One God consisting of three persons, or as they like to say, divine persons. You, you can find that on your own. Pick your part, okay? That's what they started initially at the very first started to teach. One God consisting of three persons. That is what they began to teach. Okay? Now, while well, we have this blasphemous thing here, uh, what was I going to read with you? Okay. Now we are going to be reading on page 74 and... 70, 74, 75, and 76. Their verse numbers 249 on to 256. Now I've covered the, these before, but the, the seriousness of this requires this to be read to you again. Now, where my finger is, Okay. Right here is where we're going to where I'm going to begin. Okay. You can pause it, take a screenshot, zoom in. And also we are going to be going to right here where my finger is. Okay. Holy Trinity in the teaching of the faith. From the beginning, the revealed truth of the Holy Trinity has been at the very root of the church's living faith. And that is historically accurate. That is what they had begun right away to teach. Principally by means of baptism, it finds its expression in the rule of baptismal faith formulated in the preaching, catechesis, and prayer of the Church. Such formulations are already found in the apostolic writings. Such as this sal salutation taken up in the Eucharistic lit liturgy, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. During the first centuries, the church sought to clarify its Trinitarian faith. That is true. Both to deepen its own understanding of the faith and to defend it against the errors that were deforming it. The errors they're referring to are those of us who believe in the biblical Godhead, one God, spirit, soul, and body, God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what they're referring to. Okay? This clarification was the work of the early councils, aided by the theological work of the church fathers and sustained by the Christian people's sense of the faith. <laughs> In order to articulate the dogma of the Trinity, 
the church had to develop its own terminology with the help of certain notions of philosophical origin. Do you get that? What does that mean in layman terms? They <laughs> can't prove the scripture, the uh, Trinity, out of the scriptures. <laughs> because the scriptures do not teach one God comprised of three persons. That's why. Uh, substance, person, or hypostasis, relation, and so on. In doing this, she did not, I love this, double speak here. She did not submit the faith to human wisdom. <laughs> but gay? <laughs> Yeah, but gave a new and unprecedented meaning to those terms, Ye hath God said, which from them on would be used to signify an ineffable mystery. Ineffable means it cannot be spoken. Infinitely beyond all that we can humanly understand. The church uses one, the term substance rendered also at times by essence or nature, to designate the divine being in its unity. Two, the term person or hypostasis, to designate the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the real distinction among them. And three, the term relation, to designate the fact that their distinctions lies, that their distinction lies in the relationship of each to the others. The Trinity is one. <laughs> this is Catholic. This is this is Catholic. And you Trinitarians have used these identical arguments to defend the Trinity. And you call yourselves not Catholic? The Trinity is one. We do not confess three gods, but one God in three persons. The consubstantial Trinity. The divine persons do not share the one divin divinity among themselves, but each of them is God whole and entire. That's blasphemy right there, boy. The Father is that the Father is that which the Son is. The Son that which the the Son that which the Father is, the Father and the Son, that which the Holy Spirit is, i.e., by nature, one God. Three persons make one God. <laughs> this is insanity. This is insane. In the words of the Fourth Lateran Council, 1215, each of the persons is that supreme, supreme reality, viz. the divine substance, essence, or nature. The divine persons are really distinct from one another. God is one but not solitary. 
Father, Son, Holy Spirit are not simply names designating modalities of the divine being, for they are really distinct from one another. He is not the Father who is the Son, nor is the Son he who is the Father, nor is the Holy Spirit he who is the Father or the Son. They are distinct from one another in their relations of origin. It is the Father who generates, the Son who is begotten, and the Holy Spirit who proceeds. The divine unity is triune. Right here, this is their verse number 254. How many of you have heard Trinitarians use these identical arguments? Where does it come from? <laughs> the divine persons are relative to one another because it does not divide the divine unity the real distinction of the persons what is a person? spirit, soul, and body Because it does not divide the divine unity, the real distinction of the persons from one another resides solely in the relationship which relate them to one another. In the relational names of the persons, the Father is related to the Son, the Son to the Father, and the Holy Spirit to both. While they are called three persons in view of their relations, we believe in one nature, nature or substance. Indeed, everything in them is one where there is no opposition of relationship. Because of the unity, the Father is holy in the Son and holy in the Holy Spirit. The Son is holy in the Father and holy in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is holy in the Father and holy in the Son. In case I have to reference that again. Now, I want to show you something out of out of this thing. Okay. <clears throat> First of all, and brethren, beg your pardon, but um, I'm going to show you a diagram which I thought was in their main catechism, but I couldn't find it. But Look what they have as a diagram in a diagram of the matrix. Check this out. Okay. All right. Okay. See that? That it's right here. It's right here. See that? Look at it. That they drew it as a matrix or the matrix. And any of you who know the scriptures, you know what a ma what the uh, matrix is, or the matrix. We won't get into it. But notice again how that's drawn like that. Boop, boop, boop. Mother God kind of thing, right? Yeah. And it says, the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. And over here, if you saw that, if you saw that right in here, okay, see, the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Ghost is God. And right up here, you see that? The Father is not the Son. The Son is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not the Father. Catechism. Oh, and this is right here, very quickly. Right here. Just this page. This is what we're going to be reading. Oh, oh, oh. Pause it and read it. Take a screenshot if you must. 
And this is on their page 20, lesson 3. Is there only one God? Yes, there is only one God. How many persons are there in God? In God, there are three divine persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then they give this diagram of the matrix. We may compare the three persons in one God to three persons in a human family, father, mother, child. And this is the earthen trinity, uh, Joseph, Mary, and Jesus. Okay. But the teaching of the trinity itself is heretical. Okay? And you put these together, you get the Star of Solomon. Square in the compass, the sign of the Masons. But the big difference is that three persons in God are one God. Ugh. God the Father is the first person. God the Son, Jesus himself, is the second person. And God the Holy Spirit is the third person. Three persons, but only one God. What do we mean by Blessed Trinity? By the Blessed Trinity, we mean one and the same God and three divine persons. Which the scriptures, the authorized version of the scriptures, does not teach. And finally, <clears throat> this one, which is for little children. <clears throat> Pause this and read this. Take a screenshot, zoom in, do whatever you gotta do. Okay? This is their lesson three also on page 16 and 17. What do we call the three persons in one God? We call the three persons in one God the Blessed Trinity. The Father is God. The Son is God. The Holy Spirit is God. All three persons are one God. We call them the Blessed Trinity. And, and, and look at this. Triangle, the Heavenly Trinity, and then the Earthen Trinity, Joseph, Mary, and Jesus. Or they like to say Mary, jo uh, Joseph, and Jesus. Upward triangle. Downward triangle. Okay. We picture God the Father as a kind Father. But He is really a spirit. We cannot see a spirit. It is easy to picture God the Son because He really became man. We picture God the Holy Spirit as a dove. And newsflash, animals don't have souls. <laughs> Since when does a dove or a bird, uh, since when is a, a dove a person? <laughs> but he, too, is really a spirit. We also call him the Holy Ghost. All three persons are equal. How do we know that there are three persons in one God? We know that there are three persons in one God because we have God's word for it. Not this. The Father sent his Son to us on earth. The Son told us what the Blessed Trinity is like. Really? Liars. The Blessed Trinity is God's family, but it is a family which is all one God. In this family, all is love. They never fight. They always agree. They are always happy. Say this prayer often, O oh God, Make my family holy. 
Now, the arguments and uh, philosophical reasonings that we just looked at out of the catechism there, you have heard Trinitarians use, haven't you? You may call yourself a Protestant. What are you protesting? Roman Catholicism? We just saw that the essence of being a Christian is belief in the Trinity. You're a Catholic if you believe in the Trinity. You're Catholic. I reject Mary worship, the Eucharist, water baptism, salvation. What what, what did we get? What did we just go through? Most important thing to Catholics, the big mother of all harlots <clears throat> doctrines to the Catholic is the Trinity. The Trinity. You're a Catholic if you are a Trinitarian. Because what do you Trinitarians say? Jesus is not the Father. <laughs> That's what they say. You're a Catholic. If you are a Trinitarian, you're Catholic. Plain as day. By profession, you may be a Protestant, a Lutheran, a Methodist, a Presbyterian, a Baptist, Okay, a Pentecatholic, you believe in the Trinity and defend the Trinity with these very same arguments that they use, you're a Catholic. You're Catholic. Get over yourself. You claim to hate Catholicism, but yet you hold to the very principle that they do. As the most important thing. And the Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, said, If you do not believe I am He, ye shall die in your sins. So according to you Catholics, or uh, yeah, you Catholics, you say that Jesus is not the Father, but yet Jesus saves you? And he himself said, if you do not believe I am he, it says nothing about essence, about persons, nothing. If you do not believe that Jesus Christ is the Father, you will die in your sins. I'm done playing around with this. You defend the Trinity. Now, ignorance aside, ignorance aside, because you got to remember, brethren, they, you, you heard it yourself. From their inception, the, the three-person trinity is what they immediately went on. And that can be verified by Aquinas, um, Augustus, and all the other Catholic whatevers. It's what they first started to teach. Okay? We do have to have a little grace for that. But if one will not absolutely hear, then... Can't help you. I am not a Trinitarian. And now let me really put the nail in the coffin. And this is going to offend you Trinitarians. But I'm making a point to you. Let me, no doubt. I believe and know that Jesus Christ is the Father. You Trinitarians say Jesus is not the Father. Jesus is the Father. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? Let me make my point excruciatingly plain to you. Okay? Here is my final statement on the Trinity. <clears throat> Thank you.
Any questions? Oh, I committed blasphemy, huh? No. You Catholics. You're the ones who have committed blasphemy. Not I. Not I. Do you get, do you get my point? Do you get where I stand? Now, Get the authorized version of the scriptures. Let's go. Let's go right to it. Genesis chapter 1. Here is the verse that the Trinitarian will cling to. They say it proves that God is three persons. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Yeah. Go there. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own images. In the images of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Oh, I'm sorry, it doesn't say that. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Now, the Trinitarian, this is their go-to. This is their go-to. You know that. It says that it proves what else could us and our be. The parts of the Godhead, spirit, soul, and body, communicate. Yeah. But they're not individual persons. Okay? Let, let's look at some scripture, okay? You got a bookmark? Because we're going to be praying, we're going to be going through a lot of scriptures. We're going through a lot of scriptures today, boy. But... To start, we are going to be working off of that one verse. Okay? So, get, get your bookmark. Put it there. Because remember, I use point of reference quite a bit. First, go to Deuteronomy. Not Joshua, Brad. Deuteronomy. Go there. Come on. Come on. Go there. Deuteronomy 18. Deuteronomy 18, verses 18 and 19. Deuteronomy 18, verses 18 on verse 19. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Okay? God was manifest in the flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. Okay? One God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay? So, the soul of the Godhead will give things on to the Word made flesh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Ah! Wait for it. John chapter 12. John chapter 12. John 
John chapter 12, verses 49 and 50. John chapter 12, verses 49 on to verse 50. Uh, actually, let's read verses 48 on to verse 50. Thank you, Bart. He that rejecteth me, and receiveth not my words, hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. He gave me a commandment what I should say, and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. He's talking about the soul, the Godhead. Okay? The soul of the Godhead. Okay? The spirit, soul, and body do not have their own individual minds. There's only one God, the mind of Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Father. But yet, the Godhead can separate from itself. Okay? You see that in the very first chapter of the Bible, excuse me, beg your pardon, of the Scriptures. See, I slipped. You see that in the very first chapter of the Scriptures, the first three verses, you see the separation of the Godhead there. Okay? Okay? The soul right there in verse 50, okay? And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. The soul is communicating. See, they, they're communicating, but they're not three persons. It's one God, not one God of three persons. That's heresy. Now, John 17, verses 7 on to verse 16. John 17, uh, what is this? John 17. Oh, excuse me. It's John 16. John 16, verses 7 on to verse 16. John 16, verses 7 on to verse 16. John 16, verses 7 on to verse 16. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Hold your place there. John 14, verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. The Father will send in my name. Go back to verse 7. But if I depart, I will send him on to you. Who will send the Comforter? The Father. Who is the Father? Jesus Christ. Okay? Let's continue. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin. And of righteousness, and of judgment, of sin, because they believe not on me, of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and ye see me no more, of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Albeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Pay attention. You know what? If you got a pen, circle these. Okay, I, I already have them circled, so you know. Okay, but circle these. For he, circle it, shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will shew you things to come. Okay? It's not talking about a person. The Lord is that spirit. Okay? 
There are not three persons that make one God, only one, the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord is that spirit, okay? It's not the spirit has is his own spirit's whole body. That's insane. That's insane. Insane. Just move it. Okay, let's continue. He shall glorify me, for he shall reveal of mine, and shall show it unto you. Oh boy! All, circle that, all things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. Trinitarians like to come against us. It's like, okay, if the Father is the soul of Godhead, then who's in heaven? <laughs> God was manifest in the flesh. These three are one, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one, spirit, soul, and body, okay? God the Father was the soul in Jesus Christ, the fullness of the Godhead bodily, but yet he's in heaven. Myself, uh, Brother Jacob Thompson, Brother Philip Newton, the beloved Aaron Judge, we could give you a hundred scriptures to show you. But those of you diehard Trinitarians, we give you a hundred scriptures, you will come up with a hundred more questions. So with what we looked at, shows that the Godhead communicates within his three parts, which are not persons. Now go back to Genesis chapter 1 verse 36. All right. 26. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let us. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. Not, Re uh, not Revelation. Work with me, fingers. Come on now. You're probably already there, aren't you? <laughs> Colossians chapter 2, verse 9. Actually, we, 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 we got to read verse 8 and 9. Especially since we already looked at this. Okay, we got to read this. Colossians 2, verses 8 and 9. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Okay? And with that, let us, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And of course, 1 John, 1 John 5, 7, the Johannian comma. <clears throat> Little congestion, not that much. 1 John 5, 7, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Okay? One God.
spirit, soul, body. The us, which we looked at, they, they, the parts of the Godhead, not the persons, communicate. Okay? They communicate. They're not individual persons. One God, spirit, soul, and body, which can separate. Okay? We get this? Okay? Now, in our image, okay, in our image, Genesis chapter 2, or Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. And God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. Look across the page, or look a little over, Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So man was formed of the dust of the ground, okay, and flesh, okay, and God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, God breathed, and man became a living soul, okay, in our image, spirit, soul, and body, okay, and is there more for that? Yes, there is. Go to Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. Beginning at verse 1. We're going to read Hebrews chapter 1. 14 verses. Can you handle it? God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself, by himself, purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Guys like Stephen Anderson apparently teach that, and it was Stephen Anderson, I guess, who said that the Trinitarian God the Father and their Trinitarian God the Son, the satanic blasphemy that it, that it is, that they're identical twins, that one's just older and one's younger. Dealing with rocket science, aren't we? Yeah, let's continue. Being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee? And again, I will be a father unto him, capital F, and he shall be my son, referring to the body. We're going to get into that, too, a little later, so wait for it. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels, he saith, who maketh his angels spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire. But unto the Son, he saith, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness, is the scepter of thy kingdom. How many thrones are there going to be in heaven, by the way? Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, remainest. 
and they also wax old as stuff the garment. And as a vesture, a vesture is an article of clothing, shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Look back at verse 3. Who being the brightness of his glory, and it was light, the, uh, the capital L reference to our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, being light. Okay? He being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. Express image of his person. Okay? And upholding all things by the word of his power, when he, by, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. God was manifest in the flesh. But wait for it. Okay. Now, let's go back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. After our likeness, after our likeness, Philippians chapter 2. Brad, you're going over a lot of the same scriptures. These, these next two videos, okay, the Lord is after these next two videos, the Lord is moving me on to something else, okay? But, Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 and 8, 5 on to, five on to verse 8. Again, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. Now, we were made in the image of God, spirit, soul, and body. But when God the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, yes, when he came forth of the virgin, virgin, he took on what? And was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. On that one, Psalm 113. Psalm 113. Psalm 113. Hopefully we can get this psalm done in a fair amount of time. Can you handle this? Psalm 113. Praise ye the Lord. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations, and his glory above the heavens. Who is like unto the Lord our God, who dwelleth on high, who humbleth himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in earth? God the Father humbled himself and was manifest in the flesh. And unless you believe that Jesus Christ is He, I am He, the Father, you will die in your sins. You Trinitarians say that Jesus is not the Father? He raiseth up the poor out of the dust, and lifteth the needy out of the dunghill, that he may set him with princes, even with the princes of his people. He maketh the barren woman to keep house, 
and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise you, Lord. First Thessalonians now. Again, First Thessalonians 5. Not second. 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body, that's a person, be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Likeness. He humbled himself and took on the form of a servant. God the Father. Okay? God the Father. Spirit, soul, and body. The Lord Jesus Christ, the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Okay? One God. Just one God. Not three persons. That's heresy. Okay? John 5. John 5. Verses 17 on to verse 18. But Jesus answered them, My Father worketh hitherto, and I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but, say, but said also that God was his Father, making himself equal with God. See, the Jewish people understood one God, not one God comprised of three persons. That is satanic. The Jews understood, yeah, that Jesus calling himself God, meaning he called himself the Father. First Corinthians 11. First Corinthians 11. Our likeness, okay? First Corinthians 11. Very quickly, verse 7, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 7. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as, for, for as much as he is the image and glory of God. But the woman is the glory of the man. But, it says, as he is the image and glory of God. Spirit, soul, body. One God, Jesus Christ, our God, our Father, Just one God, not three persons. That's blasphemy. And Colossians, Colossians 3, verse 10. Read the context on your own time if you would like. And have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Go back now to Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. On to verse 28. And God said, let us, spiritual body, not three persons, make man in our image, our image, singular meaning, there's only one God, and you and I are made in the image of God, spirit, soul, and body. Does your spirit have a spirit, soul, and body? Does your soul have a spirit, soul, and body? Okay. Does your body have a spirit, soul, and body? Are there nine of you walking around? After our likeness, and let them have dominion over the, over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. 
So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So you see, you and I are created in the image of God. Spirit, soul, and body. There's not three of me, oh, praise the Lord, walking around or up there here or whatever. No. There's one God, spirit, soul, and body. And God can communicate to the parts of his body, the one body, spirit, soul, and body. We already looked at that. Okay? Genesis 1, 26 does not teach one God and three persons with your us, are, and are. No. It actually teaches one God, spirit, soul, and body. John chapter 5. John chapter 5. John chapter 5. Beg your pardon, one quick second, brethren. Sorry about that, brethren. You didn't see anything, but okay. John chapter 5. Now, we already read verse 17 and 18, but now we're going to have a kind of an expository study here from verses 19. Oops. 19 on to verse 38. Okay, now if you have one of these now here, use it, okay, because we're going to go through a lot of scriptures, okay? John chapter 5, now we already read 17 and 18. Jesus called himself the Father, and the Jews knew that he called himself the Father, okay? It doesn't say anything about essence, substance, or nothing. No, the Jewish people back here before the crucifixion knew that Jesus was saying, I'm the Father. One God, spiritual and body. Okay? But now we are going to read from verses 19 on to verse 38. Okay? Let's begin with a read through here from verses 19 on to verse 21. Okay? Then Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. John 1, verse 14. John 1, verse 14. John 1, verse 14. And the Word, capital W, was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Okay? And now John 14. John 14, again, verses 10 and 11. Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? Yes, we've covered these. Bear with me again. Okay? Believest thou that I am in the Father and the Father in me, the soul? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. But the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. Okay? 
and verse 19 and 20. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. And that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. You have the Father dwelling within you, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost. The Lord is that Spirit. Okay? Okay? Now, go back to John 5, verse 20. For the Father loveth the Son, and sheweth him all things that himself doeth. And he will shew him greater works than these, that ye may marvel. Okay? Now, uh, John 14, 12 and 14. John 14, 12 and 14. On to 14, excuse me. John 14, 12, on to verse 14. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto the Father, unto my Father. Excuse me. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Okay? Philippians 2, again. I know why. There are those of you who will not get this. I know why. Philippians 2, verses 9, on to 11, once again. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That's what they, that's what the Trinitarians believe. T Trinitarianism is Catholic. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord <laughs> to the glory of God the Father. Okay? Now, go back to John 5, verse 21. For as the Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. Romans chapter 6. Verses 14 on to verse 19. Romans chapter 6, verses 14 on to verse 19. Oh, beg your pardon. For sin shall not have dominion, beg your pardon, over you. For ye are not under law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death, or of obedience unto righteousness? But God be thanked. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. <coughs> Now, verse uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 Corinthians 15, fifteen, fifteen, 
15 on to uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 45 on to verse 50. And so it was. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit that which was not first, howbeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And is and as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. And John chapter 6, John chapter 6, <laughs> come on, work with me, John chapter 6, verse 61 on to verse 65. Uh, this is the rebuke of the Eucharist, obviously. But when Jesus knew in himself, uh, verse 61 and verse 65, John chapter 6. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the Spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who should betray him. And said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father, by grace you are saved, through faith. It's not the Calvinism thing. Okay? As Brother Philip Newton said, Jesus is there ready to forgive. You just got to go to him. Call on his name. Believe on him. Call on his name. It's a hand-in-hand -hand thing. They go together. Okay? You get it? Now, go back to John 5. Verse 22. Let's re refresh on John uh, 5, verse 21. For as the Father raiseth up the dead... And quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. Verse 22. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. Revelation 1 verses 4 under verse 7. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is, and which was, and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us, and washed us from our, own, from our sins in his own blood. And hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. 
and they also which pierced him. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. And let's read verse 8. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Now, Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22, verses 12 and 13. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. One God, Spirit, Soul, and Body. Isaiah 44. Isaiah 44. Isaiah 44, verses 6 and 8. Uh, on to verse 8. Again. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first, and I am the last. And beside me there is no God. There's nothing about their persons, substance, nature, essence. One God only. One, one God. Not three that make one. Preposterous. And who as I shall call and shall declare it, and set it in order for me, since I appointed the ancient people, and the things that are coming, and shall come, let them shew unto them. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have I not told thee from that time, and have declared it? Ye are even my witnesses. Is there God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. Three persons, spirit, soul, and body make one God. <sighs> okay, go back to John now. John 5, verse 23. That all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth the, not the Son, honoreth not the Father which hath sent him. Okay? this in here. Okay? John 10. John chapter 10. Verses 22 on to verse 38. And it was at Jerusalem, the Feast of the Dedication. And it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple of Solomon's porch. I already covered these, but we have to cover it again. Okay? We have to. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, the soul. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand, I and my Father are one. It doesn't say in nature. It doesn't say in essence. It doesn't say person. One. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I shewed you from my Father. For which of those works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not. But for blasphemy, and because that thou being a man, makest thyself God. Again, the Jews knew what Jesus said. He 
He was calling himself the Father because he is the Father. And Jesus said, uh, and Jesus answered, <laughs> and Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said, ye are gods, little g, if you call them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest, because I said, I am the Son of God? If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though you believe not me, believe the works that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me, and I in him. One God, not in essence, not in substance, one God. Just one. Spirit, soul, and body. The fullness of the Godhead bodily. Jesus Christ is the Father. Psalm 82, really quickly. Psalm 82, okay? Verse 34, look at this. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said, ye are gods? Okay, Psalm 82. Hold your place here. This is one that those weirdo um, prosperity guys like to take out of context. <clears throat> Psalm 82. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods. Little g. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Selah. Now, judge. Okay? Who is the judge? God. God judgeth the righteous and the wicked. You know, we will be judged, um, you know, where we are, not for our salvation, but our works will be judged as for rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. Okay? Our works will be judged as for our rewards, not our salvation, because we are eternally secure. Uh, at the judgment seat of Christ. Woo or at the white, uh, great white throne, excuse me, excuse me. Woo Good luck with that. But God is judge. God is the judge, right? How long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? See law. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High, but ye shall die like men, and fall like one of the princes. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. Man, God has placed man in charge of certain things to have rule over. We already saw that in Genesis chapter 1. Okay? So, ye are gods, meaning that man will put man, uh, God will put men in places to judge. Romans chapter what? 13, 1 through 12, or 1 through 2. Okay? Okay? For the punishment of evildoers. I had to clear that up. Okay, that's what he means by that. Okay? Let's continue now. Go back now to John chapter 5, verse 24. John chapter 5, verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemn condemnation, but is passed from death on to life. Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5 verse 14. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee Light. Let's read verses 15 and 16. 
See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the, redeeming the time because the days are evil. 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 19 and 20. By which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometimes were disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. Okay? Verse 25. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they shall hear and live. Oops, I'm sorry, brethren. I read the wrong verse references for the wrong scripture. <laughs> okay, I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon for that. Okay, so let's, let's do this again, because you're probably looking at that, it's like, Brad, that doesn't make sense. With what you just read in verse 25, in Ephesians 5, verses 14, and in 1 Peter, verse 3, uh, chapter 3, 19, on to 20, that makes sense. You're right. Go back. To, I'm sorry about that. Beg your pardon. Verse 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is past from death unto life. John 14, 6 on to 9. I'm sorry about that, brethren. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> sorry about that, brethren. John 14. John 14, 6 on the 9. <laughs> Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, shew us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, shew us the Father? Again, <laughs> sorry about that. John 5, uh, 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verse 25, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they shall, and they that hear shall live. Again, let's go back to Ephesians chapter 5, since I messed that up, but I don't know how to edit or anything, and I won't do that. So see, you get to see something, but uh, thankfully, uh, the Lord uh, caught me right away. Ephesians 5, verse 14. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. And First Peter 3, of course, again, going through this again. <laughs> First Peter 3, verses 19 on to verse 20. By which also he was sent, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometimes were disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. Okay? Now, we'll read 25, and then we're going to get... No, we'll read 26, and then on to verse 27. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Son of Man. 
Son of David, Son of God, Son of Man. Okay? It says there, the Son of Man. The Son of Man. Okay? First, let's deal with Son of David. Isaiah chapter 9, 6. Isaiah chapter 9, 6. Isaiah chapter 9, 6, and we will read on to verse 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of his increase, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice, from henceforth even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Okay. Now, let's go to the Son of God. Jesus is the Son of God. He's the Son of David. Meaning that He is going to be King. He is King. He is the King of the Jews. And He will come back at the second coming and rule and reign in Jerusalem as King. As King. Okay? Like David. Okay? That's what that means. Son of David. Calling to His kingship. Okay? Son of God. Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 on to verse 23. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Now, did a divine person lie with Mary? The Mormons kind of teach that. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall come, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us, the Father. So, Jesus is the Father, and the Lord is that Spirit. And did the person of the Holy Ghost lie with Mary? Like I said, Mormons teach that. Huh? No. No. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Verses 26 on the verse 35. 26 on the verse 35. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel 
was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner the salutation, uh, what manner of salutation it should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, that, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. And he shall be great, and he shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. Newsflash. Joseph was of the, of the lineage of David. Mary was of the lineage of David. Okay? The one in Matthew, the um, genealogy in Matthew is uh, of Joseph. The one in Luke is of Mary. Both of David. Of the line of David. Let's continue. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And now, the Son of Man, Isaiah 42, Isaiah 42, verse 1, Behold, my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, and whom my soul delighteth. God has a soul, yeah. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentile. My servant, body, in whom my soul delighteth. My soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. You know, the Holy Ghost came down upon the Lord, signifying that he is, you know, it was an identification he was, you know, that was his, here I am, here I am, okay? That was his, I'm the anointed one. I'm God, manifest in the flesh. And he called himself the Father, okay? That's why the Spirit descended upon him. Like as a dove. Like as a dove. Not, never mind. Never mind. Just never mind. If you don't get it by now, I don't think you're going to. Okay? First Timothy chapter 3 16. First Timothy chapter 3 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Okay? First, first Timothy 2, verses 3 through 6. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved. All men. Circle that. To be saved. And come unto the knowledge of the truth. And for there is one God and one mediator between God and men. The man, Christ Jesus. Who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Okay? <clears throat> Genesis chapter 22. 
Genesis chapter 22, verse 8. When the Lord told Abraham to go and sacrifice Isaac. That's the backstory. Genesis chapter 22, verse 8. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. God will provide himself a lamb for burnt off for a burnt offering. And first John now first John four one through three. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Yeah, like Trinitarians. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. I'm going to say this plainly to you. If you're a Trinitarian, you're an Antichrist. Because what do you say, Trinitarian? Jesus is not the Father. <sighs> Jesus is not the Father, you say. Right? Now, let's skip down, okay? Let's skip down a little. Well, let's continue from verses 28 now on to verse 31 in John chapter 5. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. He went down to Abraham's bosom because he had paid on the cross. He shed his blood to make atonement for sin. He paid the debt on the cross. He went down to Abraham's bosom to bring up those that were held in Abraham's bosom. That's why we looked at, uh, for uh, as reference to verse 25, <laughs> at, verse, uh, at Ephesians 5.14 and 1 Peter 3.19-20. Okay? Let's continue. And shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. Now, let's skip down to verses 36 and on to verse 38. But I have greater witness than that of John. For the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do, bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. And the Father himself which hath sent me hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. And ye have not his word abiding in you, for whom he has sent, him ye believe not. You have not seen the soul. That's what he says. What he means. You have neither seen his, you have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. Okay? The soul. You have not seen 
the shape or form of the soul or heard the soul speaking. The Lord Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. The Father, okay? One God. Spirit, soul, and body, okay? One God. The Word made flesh, okay? Because the parts of the Godhead can separate, okay? He's talking about the soul there. But look at verse 38 again. And ye have not his word abiding in you, for whom he has sent, him ye believe not. John chapter 8. John chapter 8, verses 43 on to verse 47. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, or 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 4 on to verse 7. Thank you, Brother Jeff. Second Corinthians chapter four verses four on to verse seven. Let's read from verses three on to verse seven. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on to them. For we, we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. First Corinthians 14, one verse. Verse 38. But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. And finally, 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. Verse 5. <clears throat> For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of water and in the water. We read that mainly for, for this they are willingly ignorant of. Uh, very quickly, please forgive my mishap uh, getting reading the wrong notes for verses 24 and 25. I'm not going to redo this. This is a one-shot deal. <laughs> so when you see this video, if you make it this far, you'll when you get to that point in the video, you'll be like, what, what? But praise the Lord, he corrected me. So <clears throat> if you're a Trinitarian, 
you're a Catholic. That's all there is to it. And if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. Okay? If someone wants to know the truth of who God is, one God, our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord is that spirit. If someone is diligently and honestly seeking to know who God is, that's one thing. But if you're going to define who God is according to the Babylonian, Egyptian, Satanic, Roman Catholic Trinity, using the exact same arguments that they do, and say that you're not a Catholic, when you believe the same thing they do, and that is their, the primary doctrine to the Catholic is the Trinity. There's nothing more that you and I have to speak about. The Trinity is satanic. The Trinity is not of God. The Trinity is of Satan. I know this is going to offend you. And I don't, I'm not singling out a specific person, spirit, soul, body, when I say that. I'm saying to anyone who is a Trinitarian, this is going to offend you. I know that. But you know what? You know what? Sometimes the Lord, through whatever vessel he may use, sometimes has to take this and smack you with it. Uh, again, I apologize for my mishap earlier. I'm not going to go try to find it. I'll mention it in the description box here um, uh, when I upload this. So you're prepared for it. Uh, but I, I'm not going to do this over again. Uh, we spent we <laughs> spent way too long trying to prepare this to get the notes for it. And uh, I did miss, uh, make a mess up. I read the wrong uh, notes for the wrong verse, but as you saw, the Lord corrected me, and um, we got it right, so, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, see what I mean? I love you, and Trinitarian, I do not hate you, I don't. I hate what you believe. I don't hate you. I hate what you believe. And again, it doesn't matter if you're Baptist, Methodist, <laughs> Lutheran, Protestant, Presbyterian. You defend the Trinity. You believe in the Trinity. You're a Catholic. So, anyway, oh boy. Um, that's it for this video. I hope the Lord is glorified. Um, I, I hope, brethren of the body of Christ, the Church of the Living God, I hope, I hope this has helped. Um, the Lord be glorified. And again, I'm sorry for my mistakes. I make mistakes. Um, from the body of Christ, the Church of the Living God, um, if I miss something, go ahead, feel free to put it in the comment section. Um, but those of you who want not to even consider the truth, bye-bye. Good luck. That's it for this one. I'm going to take a little break, and then I'm going to get to the other video that I have that the Lord has given me today. So, I love you. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.